I think the best way to explain GraphQL is the story to why it was created. The problem was, how do you send data over HTTP without having to create a REST endpoint for everything? That was a problem that Facebook ran into, and they solved by introducing GraphQL. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over a decade of experience, and I've helped thousands of developers learn and grow within their craft. So before we dive in, make sure you go ahead and grab your coffee mug today. I'm using just old blue. Old blue is just a blue mug. Go ahead and grab your tea or coffee and let's dive in. So story time. Picture yourself working on a mobile app for a social media platform. <laughs> Facebook. This app needs to fetch a user's profile information, their recent posts, and all the comments on their posts. Now, using a traditional REST API, you would typically need to make three separate endpoints, let alone if you only wanted pieces of information of the post or pieces of information of the comments or users. This means multiple round trips between the client and the server, which can slow down the app especially on networks where the latency might not be as great. Now multiply this by the number of users and posts your app handles, and you can see how quickly this can become inefficient. This is where GraphQL was born. In 2012, Facebook, which was dealing with similar inefficiencies in their mobile apps, developed GraphQL as a solution to this problem of having to send multiple requests for multiple different pieces of data. Facebook eventually released GraphQL to everybody as an open source project in 2015. And since then, it quickly gained traction in the developer community with major companies like GitHub, Shopify, and other large companies adopting. So what exactly is GraphQL? Well, we can break it down. At its core, GraphQL is a powerful query language designed specifically for APIs, along with a runtime that executes these queries on the server side. But what does that really mean in practice? Unlike SQL, which is a query language for databases, GraphQL is designed to work with APIs, allowing clients to be able to request specific information about the user or information that they're trying to pull. So let's say like a user has like an ID, a username, password, all this different kind of information. Typically what you'd have to do is create multiple different DTOs of those objects. So if you wanted like a request to only return the first name or another request to return the first and last name, maybe another request that returns the phone number, maybe another request that returns all three, what you'd have to do is create endpoints for each one of these. And you could sneak around it by like sticking them in query print parameters and stuff like that, but it always felt kind of odd. GraphQL allows you to be able to use the same DTO, but withdraw only the data that you need. GraphQL can be thought of as like a middle layer that sits between your clients and the data sources. These data sources could be anything from the database to other APIs, or I guess even third party endpoints. But the magic of GraphQL lies in its ability to unify data from multiple different sources and present it to a client in a single cohesive response. Like I said, you could have all of these different pieces of information and and the client is only requesting what they want. But let's dive into code and see this in action using Fast API. All right, so I have an example code right here where we are defining a database. We have a post and we have a user, and then we're able to create these tables using SQL model. So we're using SQL model that will create all of this data for us. Now to install GraphQL, the most popular library for Python is called Strawberry. So let's start by saying pip install strawberry dash GraphQL. All right, so now that we have Strawberry installed, we need to now create Strawberry or GraphQL data types for users and post. And we can do that by saying at strawberry dot type, this is to define the GraphQL types using Strawberry. We can say class post type ID int title string and content string. And then we can do the same thing for the user type where we have to say at strawberry type, class user type, ID int name string, email string, and then posts is going to be a list of post type. Now these are going to be the information you're able to pull from our GraphQL query. Well, now we need to define the actual query resolvers, which will allow us to be able to pull this data. And there's going to be two different types. There's going to be the query resolvers, and there's going to be the mutation resolvers. The mutation, you can kind of think as like post and put. It's going to be updating data or creating data, while the query resolvers are more like gets. It fetches data. So what we can do here is to define the GraphQL query resolver. So we can say at strawberry type, class query 
at strawberry field. And now we can say def get user self id of type int, where we're going to use type hints to return a user type. We can then say with session engine as session, user equals session dot get user ID. If not user, raise HTTP exception with a status code 404 of detail user not found. And then we can return the user type ID equals user dot ID. Name, email equals user dot email and posts equal user dot posts. Perfect. Now, the next thing we want to do is create another field. So at strawberry dot field where we can say def get posts. This is where we're going to pass in self ID of type int where we're going to return a post type. So then we can then say with session engine as session post equals session dot get post ID. If not post, we want to raise another HTTP exception of status code 404 detail posts not found. And then return a post type ID equals post ID title equals post dot title and content equals post dot content. All right, perfect. So now that we have our queries, we now need to create mutations, which will allow us to be able to create these items before we query them. So we can start by saying at strawberry dot type class mutation. At strawberry dot mutation. Def create user where we pass in self name of type string email of type string and we're going to return a user type. With session engine as session, we want a new user to equal our user. We're going to pass in our name and email. Session dot add new user session dot commit. And then we want to refresh that new user and return it as a user type. Where ID is equal to new user dot ID. Name equals new user dot name, email equals new user dot email. And then posts is just going to be an empty list. And that's because we are just now instantiating and creating this object. All right, and now let's just create one more mutation that was for create user. We want to be able to create a post so we can say at strawberry dot mutation def create post. We're going to have a self title of type string content of type string author ID of type int. Or we're going to return a post type. And then we can say with session engine as session, a new post is going to equal our post where title equals title content equals content. Author ID equals author ID. We then want to say session dot add our new post session dot commit and then session dot refresh our new post. And then return the post type of ID equals new post dot ID. Title equals new post dot title and then content equals the new post dot content. All right, and now the last things that we have to do is just go ahead and combine the query and mutation classes into a schema. So we can say schema equals strawberry dot schema query query mutation mutation. Then we want to create our GraphQL router for fast API to handle the GraphQL requests. And we can do that by saying GraphQL underscore app equals GraphQL router schema. And we're going to need to import this so we can say quick fix. And if we scroll to the top, we can say from strawberry.fastapi import GraphQL router. Perfect. And then, of course, we need our app equals fastapi. And then we need to include our route. So we can say app.include router GraphQL app prefix slash GraphQL.
Perfect. Okay. So now let's go ahead and just run our application. Let's open up our browser. Here is where we can see our swagger, but we don't want to use swagger for this. What we want to do is just go to slash GraphQL. This will open up Strawberry IDE for us to be able to do some testing here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a mutation. So to create a mutation, it's going to look something like this. And what we can see here is that we're going to be creating a new user so I can remove that. And we want to have a mutation where we create a user name Alice, email alice at example.com with an ID name and email. If we click go, we can see that we just created a new user in this data type that returns ID, name, and email. If I change this to Eric, and I say go, we can see that we just created another user. I'm going to now go ahead and create posts for email. So right here, new post is the new post. This is gonna be for Alice. And then I'm gonna change this to Eric. So now what we can do is get really as much information as we want from this GraphQL code. So if we wanted to do this in REST API, we would have to write a lot of code. But right here, if I say get user and I wanna get ID of two, and I want to grab the ID, name, email, and all of the posts, I can just click this arrow and I get all of the data that is needed. If I don't want to get the posts for whatever reason, I'm like, hey, I just wanna get the name and the email, then you're only gonna get the name and the email. If I said, hey, I only wanna get the email, we get the email. If I wanna change it to a new user, we get the new user. This is the power of GraphQL. You get the data that you want, and that's what makes it so powerful. You don't need to create a RESTful endpoint for every single piece of data. You can just call it all as one. All right, well, I hope you were able to learn something and I'll see you in the next video.